Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to my second channel video. This is Canada, the world's second largest country by land area, and it's also a place I entered twice in the last month, once via the air into Vancouver International, and once via the land border with the United States of America. And of course it goes without saying that the US and Canada are some of the most unique uh, countries in terms of their relationship because they do have one of the closest relationships of two sovereign states They have the longest unmilitarized border and they're very economically dependent on each other But I didn't realize just how dependent they were on each other for transit until I drove over the border myself By the way first time going over a border in a car because while looking to enter Canada uh, right now We are in a period of COVID-19 where as well as having like a right to enter a country You know whether that be a work visa or a tourist access or whatever and as well as Canada requiring a $12 fee and like a I will not commit terrorism, uh, you know, <laughs> declaration. Uh, you also have to uh, follow COVID-19 rules, which uh, they, they, they have the basic ones of like, you need to be COVID-19 vaccinated to enter the country. And also you need to have a test if you want to enter Canada. Uh, but more interestingly is they test you on arrival. So as well as getting tested before coming in and as well as being vaccinated, you get tested when you enter. And then they also require you to, uh, so, so, like you have to download an app, you have to fill out a bunch of things and you have to have an account with the government if you want to enter Canada. And it's really interesting because there's a lot of effort being put there basically to let travel exist, but to discourage it as much as possible. However, because of the fact that people entering Canada are not just people like me going there because I don't know, they, they wanna see some snow or whatever, but also it is people who need to access Canada to get to other parts of their own country. Mostly that is the United States, in fact, exclusively. And so as a result, there are so many exceptions to this vaccination test, test, and uh, you know, like filling form uh, a thing. And that is this lovely page of exemptions right here. So amateur sports, not exempt. Okay, sat sucks. Boaters, okay, you're exempt as long as you've got a, okay, that's interesting. Uh, we've got like so many weird exceptions, but the most interesting one here is transit through Canada to or from Alaska. There is actually, uh, so like, as well as not having to take a test if you're just transiting Canada, you also don't have to take a test uh, if you're driving through Alaska to get to Alaska, but you might have to if you're driving from the lower 48 states to Canada. And let's talk about that right now, shall we? Because here's the deal. Canada and the US need each other transportation wise and it's so obvious when looking at Alaska, the 49th state, and looking at the other 48 and being like, oh yeah, if you wanted to drive from Alaska to any of those states, as a, de you know, that's that's the Americans prefer preferred form of transport, you're going to need to enter a Canadian province as well as a Canadian uh, <laughs> a Canadian territory, if we're being precise. Uh, but that is a very interesting thing, right? That like, oh yeah, Canada is required because obviously Alaska is a exclave. Canada is required to access the rest of America and for Alaskans to, oh sorry, and for Americans to access Alaska. Very interesting stuff, right? But also I didn't realize until this little page that's like, wait, so habitual residents of Alaska that drive through the Yukon. Yeah, actually it's not just uh, you know Alaskans driving to America and Americans driving to Alaska. Yeah, you're not Americans. I'm, I'm, I'm bold enough to say it. But also interestingly enough, it's people who are, exist in one part of Alaska Alaska, like let's say Skagway or Klaquan. These sound like wells. <laughs> these are all very, very real town names it seems. If you're in one of these places, or even the state capital of Alaska, Juneau, and you want to go to the biggest city in Alaska, Anchorage, well you can't actually do that. Fun fact, there, there is not a series of roads collecting, uh, connecting Juneau to uh, Alaska. As you can see, you want to do that, you better be sure you're getting on a ferry. It's, it says it's a road route, but it's not. Also, it takes 20 hours to do that amount of distance. Man, crazy stuff, right? But not only is it like basically impossible, but also to get from the, <laughs> to get from Alaska to Alaska, you need to go through Canada. It's pretty crazy when you think about it. They're like, yeah, you know, this is more proof that Alaska would be better off as a part of Canada. But I mean, obviously it wouldn't actually be for a ton of reasons that we're not gonna talk about. But for meme reasons, Alaska should just join up with Canada. However, it's not just the fact that like, okay, so the United States needs needs um, Canada because they've got Alaska over here. It's also the fact that the United States needs Canada for all sorts of other places. I mean, famously, there's Point Roberts over here. There is a whole, I wanted to go here, but I had a whole interesting standoff of the Canadian border agency that made me not want to go through Canada and America again. But um, basically, as you can see, Point Roberts over here, if you live in Point Roberts, let's say you are a employee at the Ollie Otter Bakery, but then you want to go somewhere that's not a bakery, because it's the only food place on the in the entire town, it seems. Well, you better be prepared to go through um, go through Canada because the only access point there is an airfield, but it's like it's not a real one. It's like a you know amateur. If you if you want a scheduled route from one place to another, you better believe you're going through Canada 
and then back into America. Two border crossings are required to go from Point Roberts to anywhere. This is also true for the, the weird town in uh, Minnesota, the Angle Inlet. If you want to go from Angle Inlet to somewhere that's not Angle Inlet, you're going through Canada. In fact, um, this it, like the border crossing, it's in such a remote area that they literally, if I'm not mistaken, they just have like a phone where you call up and say, hey, I'd like to enter Canada now. I don't know why that's a Canadian accent. You'd clearly be American. I guess you'd be Minnesotan. Hey, I'd like to enter Canada now. I guess my Canadian accent is my Minnesotan accent. Anyway, you're entering the United States. You've got to report to them via the video phone. Sorry, not telephone. <laughs> I'm not going to do the accent a third time. I want to do it, but I'll, I'll save you the effort of... Me, me going, hey, I want to enter Canada now. Yeah, I did it anyway. How about that? You know, this is my YouTube channel. I'll do bad accents all day. Anyway, speaking of um, places I'll do bad accents. So there's lots of places where the United States needs Canada to access the United States. But interestingly enough, there's a lot of situations. So that's like a requirement. Like you literally cannot go from those places to each other without going through Canada. However, an interesting fact is if you want to go from Canada to Canada, usually it's faster to go via the US. Uh, in fact, while I was in, um, while I was in Vancouver, I figured, you know, what? I've got a car rented for a week anyway. Why don't I drive up to Calgary? Calgary looked like it wasn't that far away, but apparently it was 11 hours. Except it wasn't even saying 11 hours because there were some floods in British Columbia. I, I don't even know. I, I, I don't look into natural disasters. And so as a result of the uh, floods, this highway right here was closed. And the route it was recommending me take was the one that goes through Washington. This is the second fastest route, 14 hours and 21 minutes. Faster than even the backup Canadian route, as you can see right there. Even though this takes so much more distance, because, you know, something about transport infrastructure, we'll, we'll come back to that, don't worry. Um, but the, the, also, just because, yeah, the fastest, like, geographically looking, so this is the third and fourth biggest Canadian cities. If we say the third and first biggest Canadian city, the fastest route is always just going to be, like, in terms of straight line distance, via the United States. This is very rarely true the other way around, but it is sometimes possible. So Detroit, for example, if you want to go from Detroit to, like, I don't know, the Burlington, Vermont, because, uh, you know, you want you want your Ben and Jerry's. There's a lot of road closures here, huh? Uh, you want your Ben and Jerry's, but you live in Detroit. And how's the fastest way to get there? You go via Canada. Um, but usually speaking, so there's a lot of weird examples. I think even like Detroit to Buffalo, to Albany. Basically, if you want to access the Northeast, I don't know what I just did, but I broke something. Um, if you want to access the Northeast of America from the Michigan Peninsula, you go via Canada. That's the weird little, like, sometimes that's a useful thing. Uh, but it's much, it's usually, in fact, in almost every major long distance driving situation, faster for Canadians to go via, uh, in fact, even the, the second uh, biggest city in Canada, Montreal. <laughs> and uh, if we connect that, to, uh, you know, Vancouver. It looks like it should be a straight line through Canada, uh, but even despite the straight line theoretically taking you through Canada and being faster, what's it gonna say? It's gonna say take you via the United States. Not for as long as it would be for Toronto. You get to spend a solid five hours in your own country in that 45 hour road trip. Man, that'd be, that'd be quite something, huh? I guess Canadians just don't drive from the east to the west is my <laughs> takeaway from this. Uh, but anyway, um, as you can see, uh, it takes a long time to get from any Canadian city to any other Canadian city, uh, and usually it's faster to go via the United States. And uh, at first I just thought this was clear geography, because even with Montreal and um, Vancouver, you can see that the straight line route between them is technically via Canada, but obviously there's more population centers down here, so that makes sense. Uh, but it's interestingly enough, not just the fact that like, yep, as you can see, uh, geographically speaking, Canada is the weirdest shape, because Canada is a result of the UK and the US negotiating over different points and times. And so as a result, you've got this really big Eastern Canada where a ton of people live. In fact, wait, have we mentioned before, uh, we, we've gone this far in a video about Canada and I haven't brought up this map yet. This is where people in Canada live. 50% of Canada lives in just the red and the green area. And then another 25% lives there. And the rest lives basic. You know, you might think like, wow, 25% of Canadians live in all of this yellow zone. But even then that's kind of misleading because all of the Canadians live in like a few cities basically within 100 miles of the border. And so because they're so close to the border all the time, Canadians need easy access to the United States for all the reasons that you might want to access another country, but also just for basic access to their own stuff. So as you can see, in the same way that like, um, in the same way that transiting through Canada uh, to get to and from Alaska is a whole weird thing where there's like, you, you, you're going to need some proof to do it and blah, 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 blah. blah. Also, uh, can, can, Canada's government lets Canadians access the United States easier in some situations like um, 
There were some floods in BC. See, I mentioned them earlier. They're coming up again. It all, all makes sense. Um, from November the 21st to January the 31st, you did not need a, um, you didn't need a COVID test and maybe you didn't need to be vaccinated, I'm not sure about that one, um, to enter the United States. Because the easiest way, like, um, I'll even show you, this, this is insane and this shows the kind of redundancy issue in Canada. Even between the huge population centers of like uh, Vancouver and let's be honest, it's a medium sized one in like Abbotsford or like uh, Clawston or Osseos. Um, all it takes for Osseos, is it really called Osseos? You know, it's going to be a native name and now I'm a dick for making fun of it. You know, I no, it's a dumb name regardless of where it comes from. Or Bridesville. All it takes for Bridesville to be cut off is this road here and that road there. And now they can't go anywhere. All it takes for um, OCUs to be cut off. It's actually a bad example of a town. Um, but I, I think, for example, in Abbotsford, if, this, if, if just a few highways are severed by, say, some water flooding, then now the only easy way for them to get to a big city is to go via the United States. If they want groceries and you live in... Uh, I, I know Merritt was a town that flooded. I have no idea why they would access America easier than, than other parts of Canada, though. But anyway, lo lots of towns were flooded, and the only easy way for them to get supplies was to go via the United States, which is so, so interesting they had to do that. Also, just another little interesting thing is, you know, I want to share this because it's interesting. During the pandemic, Canada has generally had much harsher restrictions than the United States. I think that goes without saying, right? Like, basically anything... I, I'd say the 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 way the uh, these sorts of issues are enforced is easier to do in smaller countries versus big countries, right? It makes sense that like that's that's how things be. And so one of the uh, and also there's like the political bent we can take this to, and uh, as a result, Canadians very proud of their you know like their extreme COVID measures. You know, keeping people safe by forcing them to be safe is. Definitely the best way to do things, and this is my genuine strong opinion, I really assure you. But uh, one of the interesting things is a lot of Canadians were like, ah, those Americans driving from the United States to Alaska, you know, because you're allowed to do that even during COVID, because even though they can restrict the border, they can't restrict people going to a part of their own country. And so uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of Americans came here, and the reason our COVID cases are so high is because people would, would stop and do sightseeing. You'd see American license plates in places like Banff is what you'd hear. And this did happen some amount. I think it's funny, actually. Or, you know, I actually, I wanna, this, this is one where I literally can't work out, like, this, this seems one of the weirdest things. But um, they find a driver... 569,000 Canadian dollars. I'm assuming it's Canadian dollars. Um, they find a driver half a million Canadian because he stopped uh, for a little bit in, um, and violated the country's quarantine act. And uh, yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I feel like there's like, you know, as far as like code offenses going, is, is, is $569,000 the place to start? Yeah, apparently so. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, so interesting stuff. Uh, there's a lot of weird things when it comes to uh, Canada and the United States, and we're oh, we're only keeping on going with them. So the other weird things here um, are obviously the fact that, like, did you know that um, across so crossing the border, it's easier to do. Even though it, Canada is a very strict border during COVID, they still had to make it easy enough to cross for all the reasons it was essential to. And so that's that's why I can just read this page forever and be so interested and be like, huh, what what happens during all of these weird situations? Uh, like, why why is it that driving through Canada to Alaska is fine as long as you, you know, like, there's so many, <laughs> like, you have to have these things and you have to be, like, going straight there, no no discretionary purposes. And if, however, if you're vaccinated, you can just discretionarily do it. But if you're not vaccinated, you have to go straight through. If you're driving through Alaska to get to Yukon, you don't need to be vaccinated or be tested, but you have to remain in your vehicle the entire time. And it's like, man, these are... Interesting entry rules. Also, look at the look at this website design. Why does the why does the banner get a bit smaller when there's no text in there? Anyway, um, okay, so I I have more uh, interesting things to talk about today because this is this just, this can go on forever. But one of the points I haven't mentioned yet is that like so obviously um, Canada requires America to get to Canada, and why is that? In part, one of the things I learned is that Canada generally has. Um, less infrastructure to connect the cities. Canada is, uh, so the United States is literally called the United States, right? It's states that are united. However, the federal government in the United States is much, much, much more uh, powerful 
integrated, whatever the term would be, than the Canadian equivalent. And so if interstate matters, inter-province matters, are significantly less prioritized. And so the best way to prove this would be showing you the Trans-Canada Highway. This is the, um, I thought this was just a highway name and there were other highways, but the Trans-Canada is the one federal highway in Canada, like the one federal highway system in Canada, and they call it the Trans-Canada Highway. And first of all, would like to point out, very brave for Canada to have a trans, you know, I'm not gonna make this joke. Anyway, um, but the, the, as you can see, like it's a, it's a very fun system. Uh, it's, it's lots of fun stuff going on here, as you can see. Um, but interesting enough, like it's actually, it's, it, you know, it looks like, it sounds like it's one highway. This is their entire system. This is every federal like highway thing that is majorly, you know, that ha follows all the standards, blah, 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 in Canada. And even more interesting is if you look into it, it's not actually a federal highway. They just gave some money to each of the, the provinces and said, yeah, build a highway that connects to the highway in the next state. And so it's actually British Columbia Highway 1, and then it's Alberta Highway 1, Saskatchewan Highway 1, Manitoba Highway 1. It looks so different in each of the states too. I, I, like it's, it's the same highway, but is it really the same highway? Then it becomes Ontario Highway 17. Then it becomes Quebec Auto Route 40, because Quebec is strange. Do you guys, do you guys remember Quebec? It's, you know, I, can, can I talk about another thing actually, you know? So this is the, this is the whole, uh, the, the, the Trans-Canada Highway is just one road. It's one of the longest in the world, but it's just one road, but it's actually two roads, but then it's actually one road again, and then it's three roads over here, and then it's one road over here, and then it's also a ferry over here. Can I, can I show you that? You know, I, I, <laughs> I, maybe I'm just like too new of a driver to understand these things, but like the highway goes like on a boat for a bit, and I feel like, can you really call it a highway when it's when it's a ferry? You know, if you're putting your car in a boat, is the boat a highway? And according to the map, as you can see, Trans-Canada Highway, yes, you can call it that. But if you compare the Trans-Canada Highway network across Canada compared to the United States Interstate Network, shown here as a transit map, fun map, right? Look at this. You see what's going on here? Um, also, Oprah would like to be my default browser. No. No, you know No. Just for asking, you don't get to be that. Anyway, as you can see, this is the United States Interstate Highway Network, but as a metro map, and I love this first of all, just have to say, this is a much, like, maybe it's because, you know, again, not, not really a driver. I find this information much easier to look at, much more interesting to look at, and also it just shows you, like, okay, Trans-Canada Highway, Interstate Network. Trans-Canada Highway? <laughs> doesn't even touch the, the um, doesn't even touch the, the free territories, really. And then we go back to the interstate, and it's like, huh, this seems to be more developed, as best as I can tell. And uh, so, yeah, as a result, that's an interesting thing. Um, and th and this is also why, like, yeah, the not not only is it like a better developed network that is also generally built to higher standards. And in my experience, I don't I don't know, maybe it's really great over on the east of Canada. Haven't haven't been there and driven on their roads yet. However, the interesting thing about this is uh, that not only is it, you know, is there more of it and it's built better, etc. But also the speed limits are higher and that is one of the big reasons why the Vancouver to Toronto route, which I, I definitely should do sometime, right? I, I see no issues of driving across Canada. Um, that's why even though there is a direct Trans-Canada Highway route between these two places, rather than taking a slower road that you're going at a slower speed on, wouldn't it be more fun just to, you know, hop over, go into the, is this an interstate you're taking? I, it's, wouldn't it be more fun to take the I-90 4 West and the I-90 West and the I-5 North? I, maybe it would be. Google Maps certainly thinks so. Whereas if you, if you, if you follow the Canadian system, it takes seven hours more. And probably during COVID, you'd do that to avoid the COVID test each way. Cause also here's a fun fact, you know, this, this video is just a mess at this point, but I'm just going to keep going on. Can I tell you another thing that like, I find it to be interesting. I, I, again, I, I guess like Canada is still until the 28th of February, um, heavily discouraging travel. And my, you know, I, first of all, you know, <laughs> they're going to adjust their travel advice on the 28th of February, which means travel on the 27th of February and you're a monster bringing COVID into our country and we will restrict you. We will make sure you, we, we're going to like heavily discourage you by making you go for a mountain of work. February the 28th, it's going to be all good. It's like, do, does COVID care about dates? Is COVID going to be less potent on February 28th compared to the 27th? You know, I I feel as though viruses generally don't respect dates, but I'm I'm not a politician, so I'm doing it wrong. But also, an interesting thing is if you want to take a COVID test in Canada, it has to, sorry, if you want to enter, take a COVID test to enter Canada, you can't take it in 
Canada. If, if, wait, where is this on this page? Um, okay, flying to Canada, when to take your test. You must take a molecular test outside of Canada. Well, that makes sense, it's a flight, right? But even arriving by car, let's say you're driving from Toronto to Vancouver, even though you spend that entire time in your car, you probably shouldn't, it's like 47 hours. Uh, even if you spend the entire time in your car, um, and uh, even if you took a cover test in Canada, it's not valid to enter Canada because you took it inside of Canada. Whereas if you, instead of taking it in Toronto, or let, let's say instead of taking it in Windsor, in, uh, in, in Ontario, you take it in Detroit. Because fun fact, South Detroit is actually Canada. Um, if, if you look at this though, it's like cover test, not okay. This is invalid. It was taken in Canada. Oh, it's taken outside of Canada. That's great. Like it's literally saying we don't we don't value our own tests. And the actual reason is obviously again discourage travel as much as you can. But like if we're going to discourage travel again, shouldn't we use science rather than arbitrary? Nope, that's not what the world has gone with. Anyway, you know what? we can go on a covered rant another time. Uh, we'll wait till it's gone, and then when everyone has stopped being like you know as skittish and you know like oh you know like are you sure that you want to take the stance of Actually, virus is a good toy cat. No, that's not my stance, damn it. <laughs> anyway, speaking of things that I find interesting, um, you know, should we call this, should we call this done yet? You, I, I guess actually, you know, if you look at like the Eastern Canadian provinces and you look at like, you, you like if you look at this salient of uh, the you know, main as a whole, really, you look at it and it looks like it should be faster to go via the United States, but because this is a very sparsely populated after the United States, if I'm not mistaken, it's not true. So if you want to go from New Glasgow to Old London, you know, for some reason it's not called New London. They should have called it New London. They didn't call it New London. As you can see, fastest way involves going exclusively through Canada, even though the geography clearly would imply that cutting through the United States somewhere would be faster. Apparently the, uh, the actual, the, the reality of it doesn't match up that way, huh? It's interesting stuff. It's very interesting stuff. <laughs> anyway, you know what? what I'm saying here, therefore, is that this video is all about Canada, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I I did a I I crossed. Can I can I show you some places I went on my trip? This is this can be Toy Cat Show's office. First of all, there was a place called Nooksack, and I just find that funny. I I was waiting in Nooksack for because I can enter Canada without a test because I have recovered from COVID-19, if I'm not mistaken. Because, uh, you know what, okay. Yeah, if you've recovered from COVID, but you only have one dose, you can't enter Canada. If you have one dose, you can't, sure, that's normal stuff. But I can now enter Canada for the next six months without a test because I am, wait, if your positive proof is accepted, you don't have to take arrival or day eight test. Wow, it's exciting. Uh, Canada has a pretty, like, I, I think a pretty decent law on like saying, yeah, you know what, rather than having a negative test now, a positive test from before is also just as good. And, um, however, I was traveling with someone who that was not true for, so I was waiting around in Nooksack. I don't know why I picked Nooksack. You know, sometimes you just drive to a place and you see what's going on. And, uh, while driving around the weird highways of Northern Washington at night, by the way, there is nothing here. I just want to show you, like, it, this is a, this is a major highway, and it's like, yep, there, no one lives, I mean, they live here. So do they. Are those, like, two distinct separate houses? No one lives there. How interesting thing. However, in the... Like, uh, America is big on their intersections, which is, like, not my favorite form of road design. Like, it's easy to follow. It's just go when there are green lights. Don't go when there aren't green lights. Unless there are pedestrians, in which case we don't care about pedestrians. That's your job. However, in the far north of Washington, where no one lives, they have roundabouts. And I thought that was beautiful, that my first time doing a roundabout was when surrounded by, in America, was when surrounded by absolutely no one. And you know, isn't that fun? Look at that. Are we in the U Are we in the UK right now? I can't tell. Um, anyway, yeah. Is this, is this video over? I think it is. You know, it's just been so long, I missed you guys. So should we just, should we just hang out and look at Subway together? I mean, we could do that, right? You know, is there a best kebab in a, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be moving to uh, Washington for a bit. Is there a best kebab there? This, we need to do some bonding activities, right? Uh, Dundas Street in Glasgow? Nah. Uh, Best Kebab, Seattle. Can you do this for me? There's a place called Donabox. It's not gonna do it. Um, if they don't claim to have the best kebab, they can't have the best kebab, right? Uh, I'm, I think I might be rethinking my move. You know, what, let's let's pick another city. Let's, let's find Best Kebab and then let's move there. There's gotta be one in like New York, right? That's such a big city. There can't not be a... Really? Is, is it just... Wait! <laughs> 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 
You know what? This is beautiful. This is... Is there anything more that you've wanted in the world than to find IVX2? You know, I... How, how and why did they decide to put it there? I mean, technically speaking, there is a best kebab in New York. I... You know, this... This, this is why we should hang out more on these videos. Why do I give you facts and information and opinions, bad opinions, in these videos when really I should be looking up the IBX2 cat best kebab? I know it's not a real storefront, but I just wanted to believe that like, at least there'd be a kebab stop here, you know, kebab shop that would be the best, but it looks like it's actually a plumbing, heating, electrical supply company, which if you think about it, if you have a best kebab late at night after a night of drinking, that is going to play around with your plumbing system. You know, your heating system, alcohol warms you up. And electrical supply, I don't know, I, you're going to chew through the wires because you're going to be going that crazy. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, remember to check out IBX 2 Cat Best Kebab. <laughs> Give it a review on Google. I mean, I've, I think that would be a good idea. And uh, just remember, they're open for dine-in and takeaway. They don't have a website, though, which is sad. Oh, wait, they're on usarestaurants.info. You know, this is... This is interesting, huh? Write a review. Best kebab. There we go. We did it. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Did you find it interesting? Or is this just Toy Cat travels too much and has to talk about it in a video? Uh, either way, don't really care. Goodbye.